this lecture, we're going to have a look on a tool called Maltigo. Maltigo is a program that allows us to gather information about pretty much everything. You can gather information about people using their name, their phone, their email. You can gather information about websites, servers, anything really. We're going to focus on gathering information about websites, but as I said, you can use it to gather information about anything. So we're going to go to Kali. And we're going to go to all programs here. And I'm going to type in Maltigo. And that's it right here. Now, the first time you run the program, it's actually going to ask you to create a new username and password for the program. I've already done that. So you can just do it. Go click next, 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 create a new username and a password, and then just log in. So once you do that, you'll see this, and this is the main screen of the program. Now, right here on the right, you'll see some plugins or additions that you can add to the These additions allow you to gather different types of information. So if you wanted to install any of these additions, for example, let's say we wanted to install the passive total tool, then all we have to do is just click on the install, click yes, and that will install it for you. Now, I'm just doing this just to show you, but let's go ahead and create a new blank page. And we'll see how we can use, it, use this to gather information. So this is the main view of Maltigo. In here in the middle, you have your graph where you can put your entities and track how you gather the information. On the left, we have the palette where you can add entities and gather information about them. And you can see that we can add any type of entity. For example, we can add a person using their name, their email address, or their phone number. You can also add people based on social networks. For example, you can add a Facebook account, a Twitter account, and start gathering information from there. But what, what we are interested into is a website. So we're gonna start by adding a domain name from here. So I'm going to click and drag that to my main view right here. And when you add that in here, you can see that on the right, right here, you can modify the attributes of this entity. And on the left, you can run transformers. So I'll get back to transform transformers in a second. For now, let's first modify the domain name. And I'm going to use a domain that I actually have permission to test its security, and it's isecurity.org. So now I can run transformers that allow me to gather information about this domain from the left from here by clicking on the play button, or I can right click it and run a transformer. So I'm just going to go to the home screen right here. And what I'm going to do is Right here, you can see that we have the transformers categorized into different categories. And you can click the play button right here. So you can see that there is actually a double play button here. And that will run all the transformers inside this specific category. If you click on the category itself, you'll see the specific transformers that you can run. So for example, I have a DNS or a domain right here. And I want to see the websites associated with that domain. So I'm going to run the transformer to a website based on search engine. And that will show me the websites associated with this domain name. And right here, we can see that we have three websites. We have www.wifi.isecurity.org and we have isecurity.org. Now, these two websites are the same. So I'm going to delete one of them. I'm just going to click it and delete it so that our graph looks better. Now, let's see what other information we can get from this. So I'm going to right click it again. And let's see and try to get all the subdomains that exist within this domain. So we're going to track it to name schema. And again, I'm going to click on the play button right here. And now we have more websites. We have news.isecurity.org. We have isecurity.org, which is essentially the same as this. So I'm going to delete this one. And we have ftp.isecurity.org and mail.isecurity.org. So now if we have FTP information, we know we can connect to it based or through this, web, this subdomain.
Now again, all these websites are associated or stored on the same server. So we can go ahead and try to hack into one of these and gain access to our main website, or you can use them to gain access to our main server, basically. All of these transformers, you can run them the same way. So I'm not gonna go over all of them. Let's just have a look on one more, which is the MX record. And what this will do, it'll see the mail servers that the target website uses. And we can see that they're using uh, Google to handle their mail. So again, this is very important because for example, if there was a certain vulnerability in Google um, or in the mail server that they're using, then we can exploit that to gain access to their emails and maybe use that to gain access to the website. So I'm gonna delete the Google servers that we got because they're no use, because I just wanna keep the useful stuff in here. We can use each of these entities now to gather even more information about it. Again, you, all you have to do is click it, right click, and then run transformers. But we're still not finished with the domain. So I'm gonna go back to the domain and I'm gonna go back to the main menu. And right here we can see that we can get the domain owner details. So we can get stuff like the email addresses, we can check for entities from the who's information, and we can also check for phone numbers. So I'm gonna go back and run on the double play, right, and click on the double play to run all the transformations within this category. Now, iSecurity is using privacy, so we won't really get much, but if the target website wasn't using privacy, then you'll be able to get their phone numbers, their address, and very important information. So again, I'm gonna delete the useless stuff right here, and we're gonna have a look on one more transformation. So again, we're going to go back to the main menu and we're going to look for files and documents from this domain. And again, I'm going to run all transformations within that category. And this will show me any files or maybe any interesting files stored on that domain. Okay, so this finished running and as you can see, we got a lot of files. Now, a lot of these are just PDFs, PDF books, but again, in, in a lot of websites, sometimes you'll get files like the password file or files with sensitive information. So again, this could be really, really useful in your information gathering step. 